what's going on YouTube and welcome back to my channel now today we got another exciting recipe for you guys we're gonna do a delicious seared salmon um, with the buttermilk mashed potato um, now today I want to introduce one of my newest um, friends and this guy here now what this is here is this is a John's board um, if you don't know anything about John's board uh, I'm gonna link you down to John's page down below and he creates these incredible cutting boards. Um, this thing is put together with multiple um, types of wood. Um, it's very sturdy, very good cutting board and um, he custom make every one of them. So nobody has the same exact cutting board. Um, but this guy here is just a uh, beauty. And since I got a larger piece of salmon, like a whole filet that I'm gonna break down, I needed something a little bit bigger uh, to actually break the salmon down on. So um, this John's board is incredible. Check out the logo there. Um, like I said, I'll link the information down in the description box, but this is a cool board. I think you all should check it out, especially if you're a chef. I mean, this is a perfect, perfect gift. And like I said, he custom make all of them and the return is, is awesome. So I'm going to get started with this delicious here salmon. We're going to break the salmon down. It will go ahead with our buttermilk mashed potatoes. So sit back, relax, and welcome to the Bistro. You all on my lane. You all on my lane. You ain't overlooked. So get out the way. I gave you the book. I gave you the game. The boy got a cook, yeah, yeah. The boy got a flame, yeah. Serving in the kitchen like a Nino. Plenty pitching, whipping different flavors like a bistro. Kick it, dip it, flip it, keep it hunting like a C no. Switch and keep it pimping every single place that he go. I got it. Lathan got the flame, Lathan got the flame. Boy, you know the name, get up out the way. Lathan got the flame, Lathan got the flame. Stay up by the kitchen if you ain't the one that's whipping, huh? Hey, yo, Lathan, man, cook them boys up something real quick, man. Okay, um, this is our whole salmon filet. We're about to break it down. Now, if you've seen a fresh, the, the best way to see if your salmon is fresh, if it's a whole fish, just look at the eyes and make sure they're not cloudy. But if you're going to get a filet like this, uh, the best way to tell is smell. Um, now, a fresh piece of salmon shouldn't smell like fish. It should smell like watermelon. And I know that sounds crazy, but um, trust me on that and give it a, a, a smell test. Now, fresh piece of salmon should smell like watermelon and not fish. Um, that's the first indication. Um, if it smells fishy, then it's kind of old. Um, and second step is if you touch it. And if we was to touch it and it sink in, it's old. Um, but see how this one bounced back? We know this one is it's pretty fresh. So step number one, what we're gonna do is, I set it on a, on a paper towel just to blot out the moisture um, because I don't want the slip on my cutting board so once we get to this step here see I want to just make it even and so a piece of now a piece of salmon is separated by the vertebrae which runs along the center of the salmon and also you want to run your finger down the vertebrae and around the side of the vertebrae make sure there's no pin bones in there now uh, for this preparation I never um, cut my salmon fillets and use like um, both sides. I've, I've grown, I've outgrown that. So um, the belly here at the bottom, I use that for like fish tacos um, because it's more fattier. And also you'll see in the skin, if you was eating skin side, uh, the skin on the uh, belly part is a bit, a tad bit th uh, thicker. Now the sirloin, that's the part I use um, when I'm searing salmon making salmon um, sear salmon um, because it holds up the temperature well you won't overcook um, the belly trying to make sure the sirloin is cooked uh, we just separate those down the middle and we'll use this for application and we use this for sear salmon so let me show you how I normally um, separate um, my fillet so make sure your knife is sharp and you want to go directly down where the vertebrae was and just cut it all the way down till you get to the tail and 
that should separate that. And like I said, we're gonna use the belly um, for fish tacos, so we'll put that aside. Now, we got the sirloin. So we got the sirloin now. So what I wanna do with the sirloin, since we didn't squeegee um, the skin or remove the additional scales that's on there, I wanted to just pop that skin off. So um, grab you the same paper towel that I blotted it off with. I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna show you how we take the skin off. So you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of the tail here. So I usually go in about right there and just cut down till you get to the skin. So we have the skin there. And it's normally really slippery. So that's why you wanna get your paper towel so you can kind of hold on to it. So I just wanna make sure I'm not going through. There we go. And what I'm actually doing is I'm actually pulling the skin. I'm not moving where my knife is. I'm just pulling the skin. And it should come out clean if you do it the uh, correct way. You know, we got a little flesh on there, but not much. Um, if you do it correctly, um, the skin should come out um, clean. And you're gonna see the bloodline that runs underneath. If that bother you, you can trim that up. But the bloodline don't bother me much. So I'm actually gonna leave that part alone. But like I said, um, if I was serving this for like my private chef's dinner, I would actually trim that up for presentation, but at home, uh, it doesn't bother me. So let's get our board kind of clean. And we'll go ahead and begin portioning the salmon. So that top piece there, Gonna sacrifice the little end there and we'll pop that in our fish taco batch and we'll go ahead and start portioning so it's a good portion there portion there portion there and I'm just trying to make them all uniform portion there portion there now it's starting to get thin so I do one more portion and this here we'll just pop it in our fish taco batch so here we have our salmon here okay so we'll get our fillets onto a plate and now we're about to dry cure them so so dry curing the salmon is going to do a couple of things for us. So uh, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to concentrate those flavors. It's going to um, make the flesh a little bit more um, sturdier to work with. It's going to concentrate the flavors and it's going to keep the salmon moist. So the first thing we want to do is we got some kosher salt. We just want to go on each piece kind of heavy. And the deal is don't worry about this dry cure because uh, we're going to wash all of it off at the end, but you want to go heavy. We'll flip them over. We'll go heavy again. And I know you're thinking that's a lot of salt, and it is. Like I said, we're going to wash it off, but we're also going to balance that salt off with some granulated sugar. So you're going to go with the sugar heavy like you did the salt. We're gonna flip them over. On top. Now we got all the salt and sugar on there. We just wanna get the sides as well. So kind of roll them. And we're gonna let these guys hang out for maybe um, 15, 20 minutes. 
and then we're gonna wash them off dry them and then we're gonna go ahead and get them seared and by that time we should be able to whip up our mashed potatoes and have them situated so we can get ready for plating so we got our assignment taken care of and now we're gonna go ahead um, clean up our mess and start working on our buttermilk mashed potatoes okay for our buttermilk mashed potatoes what I got is I got four Yukon Gold potatoes just peeled and I rinsed them under cold water. Um, Yukon Gold is more of a waxy potato than starch, um, but it still have a, a significant amount of starch. So I just rinsed it under cold water and let them sit on in some cold water to try to remove some of the starch. Now I just want to cut the potato in half, cut that half in half, and then just cut it exactly like that and then we'll get it going in some water and that's the water we're actually going to boil them in and you just want to cut them um, uniform um, so they all cook the same but we're going to cook them until they're fork tender fork tender where you stick a fork in it and it goes through with ease so this is going to be for our buttermilk mashed potatoes so we'll get them all peeled up Four potatoes should be good for like a family of three or four. Uh, it'd be plenty. And then we'll just go in with a little salt. Just because we want to season that liquid. Uh, because that liquid is what's cooking the potato. So we want to impart flavor in the potatoes early. So you don't have to over salt at the end. So we'll get that on the stove and then we'll be back. So we got our buttermilk mashed potatoes here. And I just got some regular unsalted butter. Real cream, I mean sweet cream butter. And I'm gonna just put a couple pads at the bottom of this bowl. Now, when you make regular mashed potatoes, you would um, actually heat the butter and the milk up or the cream up, whatever you plan on using. You'll heat that up and then uh, you'll add those to the mashed potatoes. But since we're using buttermilk and buttermilk has a low fat content, so we heat that up, it'll, it'll actually curdle a little bit and then we're gonna rice the potatoes and by the time we get them through the ricer they should be at a temperature where we can add the buttermilk without worrying about it um, curdling so add some potatoes to the ricer and if you don't have a ricer you can use a hand mixer or yeah you can use a hand mixer So we get done whipping these up. They should still be fairly warm. And to get them back hot, we're just gonna pop them down in a bain marie. So if you look at it, 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 it has enriched in color, so it's a tad bit darker, um, and you can feel it, uh, it's more firmer, and so it's pretty much like concentrated. So this is going to be more salmony than you ever taste salmon before, but in a good way. So I'm going to get our stove set up and then we're going to begin searing. So we got our skillet hot. We're gonna go in with a little bit of grapeseed oil and see how it's rippling. So it's extremely hot. And we're gonna go in with our salmon. We're not gonna cook all the salmon tonight, but.
We'll take a peek under. We'll go ahead and flip. We're gonna go in with a pad of butter. Just the remaining butter we had left over from our mashed potatoes. And we're gonna go on with a big squeeze of lemon. So we're gonna go ahead and flip again. Once we flip this time, we can kill the heat. And the residual heat is gonna pretty much finish the salmon. And what we're gonna do is begin the base. Now we're gonna just add on a little finishing salt to each one. 